a Hunter 350 in white and in blue and white and my favourite red and black and silver in black. Well now then and welcome back to Apple Yards in Keithley and uh, today I'm going to be taking out the Royal Enfield Hunter 350 and I'll be giving you my impressions of that bike so uh, a bit of riding through uh, town and city centre, some switchbacks and some main roads and we'll uh, see what all the fuss is about eh? Uh, meantime get yourselves down to here, Apple Yards in Keithley, a fantastic dealership, one of the best I've ever done business with to be fair if not the best the staff are very knowledgeable very accommodating and uh, for sure you'll be looked after here they've got a very very comprehensive stock so uh, just about anything you want to try out particularly from the Royal Enfield range and from other ranges will be here available for you and unlike a lot of dealerships that are very reluctant to allow demonstrators out at this time of year, Apple Yards have uh, most of the main brands in stock for you to try out, so uh, well worth a visit. Okay, let's crack on with the test ride. <laughs> They've got a fabulous um, Triumph Thunderbird in there, big cruiser, <laughs> uh, absolutely immaculate in black and white, 2015 plate, beautiful looking thing, anyway that's by the by. Off we go. And first off, Royal Enfield market this bike predominantly along the themes of its being a commuter and that is of course not to say and not that they are saying that that's the only thing that it's any good at far from it I think you'll find that this is a general purpose motorcycle that will do most if not all things very competently um, that on paper at least this just about ticks all the boxes so let's see so we're going to do a bit of Keithley Town Centre then we'll do a bit of a fast road on the uh, the Keithley Bypass the Air Valley Trunk Road and then we'll nip into the busier environs of the city of Bradford. So we need to test the bike's commuter credentials, don't we? To be fair, if that's the bulk of the sales pitch. And uh, then we'll take in some country switchbacks. We'll do a walk around and then I will sum up and the sum up will probably be by way of voice over so first impressions then really comfortable uh, I have the classic 350 and of course it's the same J series 350 single engine platform as uh, for the classic 350 for the Hunter 350 and for the Meteor 350 and uh, but all three bikes have their own very individual character and this straight away feels very different to my classic 350 and I think that's probably down to the 17 inch wheels and the relatively short uh, 1370 millimeter wheelbase So yeah, a different feel already. Uh, the instrument layout, same as the Meteor basically, um, same as the Scram 411. 
um, you've got um, gear position indicator, clock, odometer and trip meter, sweep, ne sweep needle, um, analog speedometer, no rev counter and obviously a fuel gauge. 60 miles an hour, no sense of effort from the engine at all. Very very smooth for a single cylinder. I'm assuming that a lot of that is owed to the uh, counterbalancing mechanisms that are included in this engine. But uh, feels very very smooth, strong and assured. So yeah, I suppose as a, as a commuter bike, it's got to be able to do certain things, hasn't it? And uh, if this has got to be a transport to and from work, whatever. Um, it needs to tick certain boxes. To my mind, it's got to be relatively small and compact, which this is. It's got to be efficient in terms of its usage of fuel, which this is. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll do the specs on the walk around. It's very efficient. Um, it's got to be capable of dealing with most weathers which is to say it shouldn't be too unmanageable when the weather turns and we get a bit of uh, a bit of snow for example and the fact that it's uh, it comes in a, a wet weight of 181 kilograms perfectly manageable and of course with the right tires on uh, you shouldn't really ever get caught out other than in the worst of circumstances in which case you should have checked weather forecast before you went <laughs> He said, having been caught in a snowdrift on a pan-European many, many years ago. But anyway, that's another story. So yeah, it's got to be at a court with some weather. And also it's got to be resilient to weather. Um, because there'll be a presumption of year-round riding. And of course the engine casings on this bike, unlike the Classic 350, are powder-coated black. So in theory, should be a lot more durable. And I suppose other boxes that it needs uh, to tick are uh, general running costs should be low, so maintenance costs, insurance and tax uh, need to be uh, all on the, on the lower side of average. Uh, and again that certainly applies to this bike. Uh, one thing you don't get of course, it's a naked bike, so you're not going to get acres of weather prote protection like you would do on a pan-european or similar bike but uh, in as much as it is a naked bike I think it uh, equips itself as well as it is possible for a naked bike to do in terms of coping with adverse weather <laughs> so then we are just going over the river air now which is down there And this stretch of road, the Bingley Bypass, which for some mysterious reason stops here, just outside of Bingley, <laughs> and doesn't continue on into Bradford for the most part. But uh, it's called the, uh, I'll show you here, look, the Sir Fred Hoyle Way. And Sir Fred Hoyle was an astronomer, an astrophysicist, born in Bingley, or a Bingley lad. And he was the first, I believe, to articulate the Big Bang Theory of the Universe. So the guy that first put forward the accepted theory for the beginnings of all creation was born in Bingley. Always found that some bikes, for you know, for whatever reason, whether because of the size or the performance or you know, the way they constructed the design just have a little sense of being difficult about them a little bit <laughs> challenging and tempestuous but um, this just feels easy this is a sort of bike really you, you don't give a second thought there's no 
preparatory thought processes that go with getting on a bike like this you just feel like you want to go for a ride or you've got to get up and go to work or whatever you just get up grab your keys and jump on it and off you go absolutely no drama the fueling which is probably one of the more critical issues when it comes to riding through traffic the fueling is excellent there's no surging, no hiccuping, no complaining there's no theatre about it whatsoever it's just there And this is the little town stroke village, this is a little village really of Saltair. And Saltair uh, named after the philanthropist and mill owner and consummate teetotaler Sir Titus Salt. And uh, I don't know if you can see the mill chimney down there but uh, Salt's Mill is down there and there's a lot of uh, housing down there which was originally built by Titus Salt for all the mill workers and their families and he built a school and um, recreational facilities and all sorts uh, again uh, well worth a visit if you're in this neck of the woods go to Salt's Mill there's the David Hockney Art Gallery there. There's a nice cafe stroke restaurant. And there's also a thing called the Early Music Shop, which is one of the main suppliers in Europe of Renaissance musical instruments. Yeah, hurdy-gurdies and crumb horns and all of that. Let's have a bit of traffic busting action here. I could be naughty and go in that pedal cycle bit, but I'm not gonna because I don't need to. Now the other beauty of this bike, because it's so nimble and light, is that when you're down to virtually stationary traffic speeds um, it's very very easy to, uh, to control. Let's just nip around here. Obviously a meeting of the Bradford Bus Confederation. And uh, very, <laughs> very quick on the turning. <laughs> That's nothing like the classic 350, I can assure you, which has a much lazier, more graceful turning, if you like. Because she's a classy old lady, whereas uh, this is a, an impulsive young pup. <laughs> I don't know if you're into naming bikes, I certainly aren't, but... Uh, if Hunter 350 had a name, it should be something like Cecil or Charlie. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> yeah, the fueling is spot on. There's no issues. If you were to commute on a daily basis with this and you pretty much knew that you'd be in and out of uh, a busy traffic and you'd have to do some filtering, some lane splitting, uh, you'd be perfectly confident that it would, uh, it would, do, it, uh, it would do it with consumer ease. Now say, if, if I was super confident and super ambitious, I could probably get down that gap with this bike because the, the width of this bike is eight, 800 millimetres. So she's a narrow little girl, fairly narrow, narrow handlebars. Uh, 
and I'm I'm wider than the bike I suspect so uh, I think if I were to uh, uh, overcook it down there I'd end up getting my elbows clipped but you could do it that's the point you can do it on a bike like this So that is the uh, world famous Science and Media Museum there, that's worth a visit. Just nip in here. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop back down onto the inner ring road and then we'll go back out towards Keithley and find some country switchbacks that's the plan you see I wouldn't dream of doing this on something like the Pan-European or anything of roundabout that size you can just be a little bit cheeky with bikes like this and uh, people, if you uh, just uh, give them a wave of appreciation like that, people will understand it. Watch this fella now try and run me over as I turn left. <laughs> I've waved at him, he can't do that. But there, yeah, you couldn't do that on a big bike, could you? Plenty of torque from this engine, you know, you can change up fairly rapidly, provided you're not on a, a very steep hill. There's more than enough torque from uh, from this engine. Like I say, when I do the walk around, we'll, uh, we'll talk numbers. I'm not massively interested in numbers, to be honest with you. Uh, it's all about how the bike rides, feels and looks to me. I think there are three senses at play with uh, with a bike, and that is uh, sight, sound, and touch. You could argue smell, because there's certainly a smell associated with new bikes, and a smell associated with uh, with two strokes, and a smell associated with. Um, vintage British bikes, i.e. leaking fuel <laughs> I don't think that's been unfair uh, so maybe a bit of smell going on, no taste well if you've ever tasted your bike I'd be seriously concerned about you and I don't think it'd be grounds for taking it back to the dealership uh, on basis that you didn't think it tasted too good <laughs> somebody will try it won't they Yeah, without a shadow of a doubt, this bike is very much at home in uh, city traffic. Laps it up. And I, I'm sure it has been and continues to be put to test in uh, bigger and busier cities than this. Uh, you know, particularly, uh, particularly in its homeland of India. Uh, where I'm sure these things uh, fly around places like uh, Delhi and Mumbai and uh, probably smoke just about every other motorcycle on the road there which would be low capacity uh, you know 50, 100cc, 125cc scooters and motorcycles by and large I would have thought so this thing would be king of the road out there it'd be it's king of the road here um, you know, most of these cars will be faster and more powerful than this motorcycle, but um, they'll not be uh, by and large as quick off the mark, they won't be as agile, nimble and athletic. See, we're up to 40 in no time at all. And smooth as you like.
Right, okay then, so let's do the walk around. Here we have the 2023 Royal Enfield Hunter 350. And uh, <laughs> might be worth pointing out, of course, the HNTR 350 here in the United Kingdom. I'll cover that uh, in the summary at the end. So uh, let's start the front of the bike then. So, instrumentation, what do we get? Well, very uh, standard utilitarian uh, setup basically. It's the same um, speedo and information unit that you can see there as the Meteor 350 and the Scram 411. And the uh, Super Meteor 650 for that matter. So there's what you get. You get the analog speedo in miles per hour and kilometers per hour. You get the fuel gauge, the odometer and trip meter, um, which is cycled using this information button here on the left hand side. You get a gear position indicator and a clock. Going round on the left hand side, the switch gear, again it's the same as the Meteor and the Super Meteor and the Classic 350. We have the kill switch position, neutral position and start. The uh, hazard warning lights activation is there. And uh, of course on the right hand side, uh, that's your lot really. On the left hand side, we have full beam, dip beam and flash to pass. We have the indicators, left, right, push to cancel and the horn. So let's uh, drop down. We have standard forks at the front with uh, no adjustment. Brakes. At the front we have a 300mm disc with a Bybre twin pot floating caliper and a 17 inch wheel there running tubeless Seat tyres and uh, just popping round to the back we have twin shock absorber suspension Adjustable for preload, six adjustments at the bottom there. And brakes wise, we have a 270 millimeter single disc with a Bybre single pot floating caliper. The engine casings, as you can see there, are all powder coated in that sort of satin Teflon like black finish as is the exhaust from header to the uh, silencer at the end there and uh, cracking it sounds too uh, you get the center stand side stand obviously and uh, the engine itself is a single overhead cam single cylinder four stroke engine Puts out 20 brake horsepower at uh, just over 6,000 RPM and uh, puts out uh, just short of 20 pound feet of torque at 4,000 RPM. And a uh, very characterful engine, bags and bags of personality. We have the uh, twin spar frame there and uh, this particular colour scheme. It's blue and white, and uh, it'll have a name, I'll pop it up on the screen. Um, yeah, so let's, uh, let's just have a look uh, generally at the, uh, the bike from a distance. It's uh, 800 millimetres of seat height, and uh, I'll just pop on the bike in a minute so you can see how I look on it. Aesthetically, very pleasing to the eye, I have to say. Got a very functional look about it. 
And uh, you've got to admire uh, Royal Enfield for putting a, a centre stand on a standard uh, on a bike at this price point. It comes in at under £4,000. It's a 13 litre fuel tank and uh, at a claimed 102 miles per gallon that should easily give you 300 miles or just shy thereof. Fairly standard uh, halogen headlight setup, fairly standard indicators setup. The tyres I found uh, found absolutely fine. Of course, the roads are dry today, but I've not found them in the least bit uh, bit twitchy. As you can see, they are Seat there, uh, Indian make, and uh, tubeless on this bike. Uh, tubed on the others, certainly tubed on the classic. We'll take a pillion, and uh, plenty of room there for a pillion on uh, on a bike of this size. So uh, yeah, eminently feasible to ride uh, ride two up. Right, I'll let you have a look at me on the bike, and then you can get an idea of the uh, overall. Right, here we go. So uh, yeah, I'm uh, six foot one tall. Um, about 83 kilos and sort of 32 going on 33 inside legs so this is what I look like on the bike easily flat footing with the knees bent so uh, you know if you're a good bit less than uh, less than six foot you'll be fine on this bike as I say the wet weight of this bike's um, 181 kilograms so it's a good bit lighter than the classic 350 and that's probably down to the fact that uh, a lot of the parts which on the classic 350 are metal uh, on here are plastic but it, of course it's a different sort of bike isn't it so it feels very light and agile and uh, as you can see the riding position and the position of the hook controls cock on don't drive over my camera, missus. Right, so here we are on some country switchbacks. And uh, an absolute delight to ride this uh, ever so nimble and agile little bike. Against, uh, or rather, in and amongst uh, this landscape. just made for the job so equally at home out in the sticks as she is in the depths of the metropolis so what do we think of the brakes then adequate I mean the front brake alone ain't gonna set you on fire uh, the rear brake on its own is not going to set you on fire um, but they're fairly well balanced and uh, it's as I've, as I've said in the past uh, when it comes to Royal Enfields in my experience the thing to do braking wise is to get back into that old school habit of uh, applying both brakes simultaneously um, to gain maximum braking effect but uh, just to work out what the right proportions of braking um, in terms of uh, the, the ratio of front to rear uh, are uh, but that's the way to get the best out of the braking of this bike but it's more than up to the job it doesn't have to haul up an awful lot of weight does it well maybe it does with me on <laughs> and uh, plenty on tap from that engine for this kind of riding where you are not seeking endless power fueled thrills but you're just wanting to uh, pootle about the countryside chilling out taking in the views and generally not having to put much effort at all into your riding this is exactly where this bike is at home and I have to say <laughs> 50 mile an hour on a bike like this feels like 70 on uh, on a bigger bike so you're still getting your thrills 
Well, I do hope that was of some interest to you. Royal Enfield market the Hunter 350 as a hip Metro Retro, referencing by way of justification the bike's enhanced agility and reduced weight over its 350 stablemates. And it shares the same J-Series engine platform as the Meteor 350 and the classic 350, but it's a significantly lighter and more nimble piece of work. So what qualities does a motorcycle need in order to be considered a credible commuter? Well, it certainly needs to be physically small, light and manoeuvrable enough to negotiate traffic, and the Hunter is certainly that having as it does a wheelbase of just 1370mm and an overall width of just 800mm. It also needs to be frugal and at a claimed 100 plus miles per gallon and near 300 mile range from the 13 litre tank that box is well and truly ticked. And not forgetting that as well as delivering excellent value for money at under £4,000 on the road, the ongoing running costs associated with servicing, road tax and insurance will be as low as it's possible to get without having to pedal everywhere. The bike is also unlikely to fall foul of any local emissions related travel restrictions and if the day ever comes when it does, well, we'll probably already be prisoners in our own little 15 minute communities. A good commuter should also be a bike which doesn't find itself grounded when the weather takes a turn for the worse. And insofar as a naked bike can be all weather friendly, the diminutive size and weight of the Hunter will make it at least manageable should some of the white stuff descend from the skies. Now a bike never has to look stylish to be functional, but it certainly helps to feel good and look cool. The Hunter has enough colourway options to suit most tastes, all of which look, to my eye at least, stylish and modern in a sort of retro way. In the UK the Hunter has had its vowels removed to become the HNTR, no doubt to avoid domestic copyright issues with the Hunter name but it requires a concerted effort to notice this on the graphics. All in all, the bike cuts a stylish profile and is well presented in the modern classic genre whilst cleverly revealing a twist of the modern. Now, obviously being UK A2 license compatible, this bike is likely to appeal to new, younger riders who will no doubt also appreciate the hip nature of the whole package. Freddie Dobbs fans, please note. But to confine the Hunter to the subset of commuter motorcycles alone would be a mistake. Its relative size, power and top speed extend its repertoire into touring and recreational territory. The bike will cruise at 70 miles per hour with relative ease where laws, circumstances and terrain allow and the addition of a passenger and some modest luggage is unlikely to cause any drama. As a weekend scratcher and cafe mule, the Hunter will equip itself handsomely and is sure to impress with its slick cornering characteristics and engaging ride. In conclusion, the best way in which I can describe my initial impressions of the Royal Enfield Hunter 350 is to employ a little alliteration. Competent, comfortable and characterful. This is a small bike with a big personality.